Hey everyone, I'm Shashank. I'm a product manager on the AKS team. I work on the service mesh and multi-cluster areas for AKS. And today I'm excited to talk about the Istio-based service mesh add-on uh, that we recently released for AKS. Uh, this is the first of the many uh, talk talks on this particular topic. Uh, so today we'll be giving an overview for Istio on AKS and what the add-on uh, contains. Uh, but uh, as a subsequent uh, series of videos to this talk, uh, there will also be a talk on versioning, there will be a talk on security overview, mesh config and scale walkthrough as well. Uh, so we have an exciting uh, set of content for you ready to uh, learn more about the Istio add-on. And uh, we we are excited to also learn about how you would like to use this and if there are any features uh, in the future as well. Uh, now, moving further, uh, let's actually start with what is a service mesh. Uh, before we actually get into Istio on top of AKS, let's get a general overview of uh, service mesh. So uh, before the service mesh existed, uh, modern applications were like basically moving towards the uh, microservices trend where there is basically a a bunch of uh, services hosted and like potentially talking to each other. And uh, along with it came the requirements of having to manage traffic to these services, uh, setting up observability in terms of metrics and traces, and also uh, enforcing security for the service service communication as well. Uh, this could be uh, like making sure that the uh, traffic is encrypted over TLS and also having authorization policies to ensure that only the right actors are talking to the services. Now, uh, the possible approaches for addressing this before service mesh uh, most often involved uh, people editing their uh, service code itself and embedding the logic for traffic management, observability, and services like authorization inside their application code. But there, this also meant that when you have hundreds and potentially even thousands of microservices, every single service had to make this change as well. And for large organizations who have these thousands of services, this was a pretty big scale problem as well as an operational burden as well. So to do away with this operational burden, uh, Service Mesh helps you out by uh, basically taking a no application uh, code change kind of an approach where uh, instead of this logic being directly in, inside the application code, instead we have this embedded inside the sidecars that is to uh, inject uh, to your application. And inside this, uh, uh, via, these, uh, via the traffic like flowing through the sidecars, all of these uh, like benefits in terms of traffic management, observability, and the security benefits are provided for you. Uh, so now we segue into where uh, Istio entered the scene. So with Istio, you get a lot of these benefits. Let's start with the, uh, I always like to think of uh, service mesh in terms of three pillars. Uh, security, observability, and traffic management. Let's start with the security part. Uh, so just by enabling the service mesh, uh, you get the benefit of every single workload uh, being able to obtain a certificate of its own. And then you can uh, set uh, peer authentication modes in a cluster to say that I only want to have all traffic be encrypted over MTLS. Uh, or you can also set permissive mode or uh, none modes as well. And uh, now moving into the uh, next uh, bucket of traffic management. Uh, you get automatic load balancing for HTTP, gRPC, WebSocket, and TCP traffic. And you can also, uh, at a very fine grain level, control the traffic behavior. Uh, you can do uh, retries, failovers, uh, fault injection. You can like provide individual, like provide weights to individual like services and that versions of services. So uh, in terms of traffic management, you get a whole bunch of things without having to actually change your application code. And then comes the uh, like the policy uh, layer. Uh, this is also kind of related to the security layer, I would say. Uh, you have access controls in terms of like authorization policies, uh, but you can also like establish rate limits and so on via uh, Envoy filters and other APIs. And then uh, automatic metrics, logs and traces. Uh, whenever we are like uh, in the middle of a production incident, uh, the first thing we would like to have uh, is metrics and traces so that we can go figure out where things are going wrong. But to be able to get that instrumentation in, the pre-service mesh approach involved changing a lot of the application code. But over here, without actually making any changes, uh, you're getting uh, requests, like the total request, the success rate, uh, the latency related like metrics are available like out of the box. Uh, you also get traces uh, in terms of the service service calling each other uh, and you'll be able to like see the entire like uh, 
the flow of this uh, the traffic throughout your uh, chain of services as well so all of these benefits are made available by istio without you actually having to make any change so istio uh, also went uh, i mean also uh, contributed to got contributed to cncf in 2022 and that's the point of time at which uh, like we started looking into it as a managed service so the current status it is a cncf graduated project so from a project governance perspective and uh, from a roadmap perspective it's in a, a really healthy state uh, and uh, in AKS and in Microsoft, we take a lot of pride in uh, working on open source like projects. Uh, so we make contributions to the Istio project upstream. And also uh, we uh, consume that to uh, provide you a managed service on AKS uh, as well. Uh, now, moving to the layout of the Istio uh, add-on itself. Uh, so when you enable the Istio add-on on your cluster, uh, the control plane, uh, which is basically Istio D, uh, gets deployed on the uh, customer's clustered nodes itself. And you have the option of enabling an external ingress or internal ingress or even both. And those instances get deployed on your customer nodes as well. Uh, in terms of the sidecar, you can uh, add revision labels to your namespaces, and you can get the sidecars injected to uh, any workload that's coming up within that namespace automatically, or you can choose to manually inject the sidecars as well. Uh, in terms of the uh, revisions, uh, we'll cover that in a lot more uh, detail in the upgrade like talk. But uh, whenever there are version upgrades available, uh, all these components, uh, that's Istio Daemon, the Ingress, uh, all of those components, uh, we provide a, a managed experience for upgrading them as well. And from a shared responsibility standpoint, uh, the workloads uh, which have the sidecar proxies always need to be restarted by you. So that way, uh, we provide a managed experience, but we also give you uh, complete control in terms of uh, when you can restart these workloads. Because at the end of the day, not all applications can be ready for seeing this restart. So we just want to uh, provide the platform in a way that it is uh, meets you where you are rather than like taking a, a enforcement kind of an approach. Uh, and in terms of the rest of the ecosystem, the uh, you can have managed Prometheus uh, enabled for the cluster as well. Uh, so that way for the metrics that are generated uh, when there are service service communication happening, uh, these metrics can be uh, ingested into Azure Managed Prometheus. And later you can set up uh, the linkage between Azure Managed Grafana and Azure Managed Prometheus. And then you can like build out your dashboards as well. And uh, for tracing, we are uh, actively working on uh, making the integration with application inside smooth so that the traces that are uh, that are getting generated on the cluster, there is an easy way to uh, ingest them into application insights. Uh, moving further. Uh, so what challenges did we hear from customers and uh, what are we uh, what have we done specifically about each of those challenges? Uh, so the main one was on uh, version management and upgrades. Uh, so as I mentioned, we have a story for both the patch version as well as the uh, minor version uh, upgrades. Uh, at any given point of time, we have like two versions that are uh, officially in support, and uh, we have like uh, uh, upgrade APIs available. Uh, or other upgrade commands available, which help you with the whole upgrade process. And you can deploy a canary uh, new version, canary of the new revision, and uh, make sure that everything is working before you complete the upgrade or uh, rollback. Uh, in terms of uh, large scale clusters, uh, we do some fine tuning of the components that are deployed in the cluster. And that in also includes uh, adjusting scales of components like core DNS. Um, and next, with respect to observability, uh, you can, of course, you can use the Istio add-on with self-managed Prometheus and Grafana. Uh, but we have also verified that the Istio add-on works uh, with Azure Managed Prometheus and Grafana, as I mentioned. Uh, and next, uh, when there are any issues with like Istio components that we deploy and the additional like things that uh, we provide from a managed perspective, for instance, uh, with respect to setting a plugin CA, there is a job that we run which uh, detects when there is like a root certificate authority change or intermediate certificate authority change, and then it helps uh, restart the Istio daemon. So let's say there is a issue with that job or any other like component that we deploy from an add-on and a managed provider perspective, we are also providing official support for that as well. So if you're deploying self-managed Istio, you are relying on community support for uh, 
addressing those issues. So you go to GitHub and open an issue, and then like you wait for the resolution over there. Uh, with respect to any issue, with respect to the uh, add-on Istio, uh, you can create an Azure support ticket, and like we have support processes in place to help you out there. Uh, moving further, uh, now comes the uh, roadmap uh, talk. So, so far, I've just given an overview. Uh, like before I start on the roadmap, I'll mention that, uh, as I mentioned at the beginning of the call, we have four more sessions lined up for you. I would strongly recommend taking a look at all those four, uh, upgrade, security, uh, scale, and mesh configuration. They'll give you a lot more granular detail about those features. And uh, that's for the existing set of functionality that we have. And now coming to the roadmap, this is our future uh, roadmap over the next few months and a year. Uh, so first off, we are working on uh, Microsoft managed uh, CS solution, wherein uh, Microsoft would be taking care of provisioning the certificates, rotating the certificates, and so on. Uh, next, right now, we have single cluster Istio add-on, where you can enable Istio add-on individually for each and every cluster. But we are actively designing the uh, next set of experiences in terms of how you can have a multi-cluster service mesh so that you can have services in one cluster communicate to the other and still have all these benefits of uh, security observability and traffic management. And then third, uh, right now, as I mentioned, when you enable the Istio add-on, the add-on components get deployed in the cluster itself. And that includes the Istio daemon control plane as well. Uh, as the next step and the future evolution of the uh, managed mesh experience, we want to provide a hosted and a managed service mesh experience where we host the Istio daemon control plane and also help with uh, scalable service discovery story there. Uh, after that, uh, we are also going to work on auto upgrade and release channels. So right now, as I mentioned, we have uh, mesh upgrade experiences, which one of my teammates is going to cover in a lot more detail in a coming uh, uh, video, but right now what we have is manual upgrade experiences. We provide you the uh, knobs in terms of AZ AKS mesh upgrade to be able to manually go and initiate the canary upgrade, manually complete it and manually roll it back. Uh, but in future, uh, we want to provide an experience where you can uh, opt in uh, as an optional feature for auto upgrade uh, on both the uh, patch and the control like a patch and the minor uh, versions and there could also be like release channels associated with how these uh, revisions are made available and what revisions are consumed for your auto upgrades uh, enhancements to portal views so we currently have a uh, initial set of portal views in terms of being able to enable the to add on being able to add an ingress external and internal being able to set up plugin ca uh, we are going to further enhance these portal views with uh, topology views similar to uh, what's available in open source uh, in the KLE space. Uh, next, we have Ambient project. Uh, Istio upstream is going undergoing a lot of, lot of uh, like refactor or improvements in the project in terms of uh, approaching a sidecarless uh, model. Uh, and that's the Ambient uh, like project. That's the code name for that project. Uh, now, Ambient has recently gone beta, uh, and uh, we are aware of that. We are also actively contributing that, to that from the uh, Mesh upstream team. Uh, and at the right point of time, as the project matures, maybe closer to stable, uh, we will uh, reassess our timeline in terms of our readiness for uh, being able to work on, uh, deliver on a managed Ambient experience. Uh, so we are closely following updates there and also contributing to that project as of now. Uh, next, we have the default dashboards. Uh, so as I mentioned today, even with Azure Managed Prometheus and Azure Managed Grafana, you can go get your metrics ingested there and you can self-create the dashboards that you want for Istio. Uh, and you can even import the community dashboards that are there for Istio by just changing the data source. Uh, but we want to provide a simpler experience. We want to provide default dashboards out of the box if we detect that the Istio add-on is enabled for, the, for your cluster. So that's something that we have on the roadmap. And integration with application insights for trace collection and querying, I've already mentioned in the previous Right, that's something we are working on. Again, it's uh, doable in a self-managed. Like if you uh, like do it yourself, you can uh, get this ingested today. But we want to uh, simplify the integration experience. That's what we are working on. Uh, next, we don't just want to have these metrics uh, ingested, but we want to provide. Uh, experiences on top uh, because we know that most of the uh, developer teams or the SRE orgs, they basically uh, like to have SLOs authored on availability, on latency, 
uh, and so on. So we want to provide an experience where you can author these SLOs and you can also visualize uh, your error budget and uh, you can also configure error alerting uh, in conjunction with your Azure Monitor alerts so that if uh, the service is at risk of violating the uh, SLO that you had set for the uh, service, uh, you would get notified on the uh, channels that you have set up for alerting. And then uh, the last one. Uh, so right now we have App Gateway for containers uh, as a chart available for AKS clusters. Uh, we are currently working on integrating that with AKS uh, from a single cluster perspective and later from a uh, multi-cluster perspective with Fleet. Uh, and on a related note, we are also working on getting MTLS working between uh, the app gateway for containers and the uh, backing mesh pod so that uh, MTLS is available like across the board. And that's the integration work that we are currently doing for uh, app gateway for containers. Uh, so this is what our roadmap looks like. Uh, as I mentioned, this is just the first of the many talks. Uh, we have a, a set of talks planned right after this, and uh, we are excited to see how you will uh, consume the issue add-on. And uh, uh, if you have any uh, issues or feedback asks, uh, you can always go to the AKS GitHub repo and create an issue over there and reach out to us with feedback too. And we are excited to learn how you'll use this. Uh, that's all from my end, folks. Uh, thank you so much.